हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दीपशी खायस अकेडमी आई होप एवरी वन ऑफ यू इज़ हेल्दी एंड फाइन सो वी विल कंटिन्यू द इन्वायरमेंट सीरीज दिस इज़ द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट सीरीज ऑल राइट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडीड अबाउट द बायोम्स वट आर बायोम्स बायोम्स आर द मेजर जोग्राफिकल सब डिविजन ऑफ द बायोस्फेयर विच आर डिफ्रेंशिएटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ करेक्टरिस्टिक डोमिनेंट वेजिटेशन फाइन सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ बायोम एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस डेफिनेशन वी स्टडीड द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ टेरेस्ट्रियल बायोम्स एंड इन दैट वी स्टडीड द फॉरेस्ट इन फॉरेस्ट वी हैव डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ फॉरेस्ट इन द एंटायर ग्लोब so we talked about the equatorial rainforest we talked about the tropical deciduous forest the temperate forest and also the taiga that is the boreal forest so these were the terrestrial biomes with respect to the forest all right so now we'll continue with the next terrestrial biome that is the grassland all right so we have done forest now we are moving towards the grasslands fine all right so what are grasslands so just like we said that in forest the dominant vegetation is trees fine so whenever you see a lot of trees you will say this is a forest area fine in the same way in grasslands the dominant vegetation will be grasses fine so if you see a lot of grasses that means that is a grassland the dominant vegetation is grassland and we can define that on the geographical area of the of the earth and also that will come under the biome all right so we'll study about the grasslands so if you want to study the grasslands on the globe there are two types of grasslands that are majorly there one is the savannas which are also known as the tropical grasslands and the other is the temperate grassland fine so we'll study the savanna as well as the temperate grasslands that are present on the globe all right so starting off with savannas so savannas are grassland with scattered individual trees so what you will see here is if you see this geographical area you will see that there are lot of free spaces on which there are grasses and there are individual trees placed at various distances theek okay? hai so this is the characteristic feature of a savanna all, all right so this cover the half of the surface of africa you will see this type of grassland the savannas in africa you will also find it in australia south america and also in india so india also have savannas that is the tropical grasslands all right so they are found in warm or hot climates where the annual rainfall is from 40 to 80 cm per year all right so 40 to 80 cm is not a lot of rainfall it is a medium type of rainfall fine so you will find these types of grasslands there so that is why there are not lot of trees because the rainfall is quite less all right so in such areas what will grow grasses will grow all right so it has both rainy season and dry season so these areas in which grasslands are present they have both type of seasons fires are important part of the savanna now when the season is dry these grasses also become drier fine and they also catch fire now we are saying that fire are important part of savanna why are we saying this because fires are actually considered to be really really beneficial to the grasses all the dead grasses are removed all the pests all right they they are removed all the unwanted shrubs are removed and it will give way to the new growth of the grass so that is why these fires are actually an important part of savanna fine and also it it has the world's greatest diversity of ungulates these are the hoofed animals for example the zebra the giraffe they have a characteristic feature they have a different type of foot okay if if you see in the feet of these animals like the zebra the deer the buffalo or all right the wild wild buffaloes or the wild beast fine the giraffe zebras you will see they have particular type of feet so these uh, animals are known as ungulates we have a large population of ungulates in these savannas why because these animals are actually vegetarian animals they feed on the grasses and these grasses of the savannas are very nutritious all right so they support a very vast population of these ungulates okay so the best example would be if you have seen on the discovery channel or the net geo you have seen the serengeti national park of tanzania it's in africa all right so they actually show that 
in these uh, documentaries you see the savannas of africa there okay so Seren serengeti national park is the best example of savannas of africa you see a lot of uh, population of wildebeest there there are lions cheetahs and the african elephants hippos so all these zebras giraffes all these are present here in the savannas so very good diversity of these ungulates as well as lion cheetah and all these varieties as well different species as well all right and they are also called the big game country see these african countries uh, in certain areas they allow the hunting of these uh, big animals so that is known as the big game country all right so it is actually played like a game so that is also happening in these savannas only all right so this is the characteristic picture of a savanna you can see the grasses here and also the trees the individual trees that are present at distant locations fine so this is the characteristic feature of savanna where they are present they are present in africa they are present in south america and also in india all right so these savannas what these are these are actually the tropical grasslands that have certain geographical features they have the dominant vegetation as grasses and also a wide variety vast variety of these ungulates also survive on these savannas all right so now we'll move towards the temperate grasslands so just like we talked about that there are grasslands uh at at the tropical level so we'll move above the tropical level tropical level is the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn that is 23.5 degree north and south fine and you move above that towards uh, the arctic circle all right so that entire region from the tropic of cancer to the arctic circle is your temperate region and in this region you find the temperate grasslands all right so what is the dominant vegetation again the dominant vegetation of these grasslands will also be the grasses fine now trees and large shrubs are absent so in the savannas we just saw in the picture as well so there are individual trees they were standing in these grasses fine so this is a savanna but in the temperate grasslands you don't generally see trees so there is a vast land of grasses okay this is a vast grassland and you won't see much trees there all right so temperatures vary more from summer to winter and the amount of rainfall is less in temperate grasslands as compared to the savannas fine so rainfall has become even lesser that means very less trees okay so you, if you see lot of trees that means there is lot of rainfall all right so as the rainfall decreases it will move towards a grassland so if you are seeing a forest forest means that area is having good rainfall and if you are moving towards lower rainfall regions that means you are moving towards grasslands fine lesser rainfall means lesser trees now what will grow there grasses will be there fine and you move towards even lesser rainfall areas you will be moving towards desert areas fine there will be no grasses as well all right so we are talking about the temperate grasslands in the temperate grasslands what we said is that trees won't be present there grasses are everywhere all right now these are some of the names of these grasslands the steppes the pustas the pampas the wells all right so different countries have these grasslands and they have different names for these grasslands you must know this all right for example you are writing an answer all right and in that answer you are writing the grasslands of america north america instead of that you write the prairies of north america all right so that is more refined it will fetch you more marks so that is why we should uh, know a very good you know dictionary also of keywords that can be used in your answer writing that can refine your answers and can fetch you more marks all right so the first are the steps of the former soviet union now steps the soviet union was actually a combination it was a union of lot of countries like russia ukraine the two countries that are fighting today they were once part of the soviet union and also countries like uh, belarus georgia 
and uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, fine. So these were all countries that are actually the neighboring countries of Russia. They once formed Soviet Union, which actually uh, it actually broke in 1991, the Soviet Union. Now these areas, where are these areas? These areas are actually Russia and Central Asia region. Now these areas also have these temperate grasslands. And what is the name of these grasslands? It is the steppes. They are known as steppes. Fine. Now the Pustas. Pustas is the name of the same temperate grasslands in Hungary. All right. Now the Pampas. Pampas is the name in Argentina and Uruguay. These are the countries of South America. They are known as the grasslands are known as Pampas there. All right. Then Wells. Wells is the grassland that is the temperate grassland that is uh, present in South Africa. All right. It is uh, if you see the continent African continent. Okay, South Africa is at the bottom and there at the bottom only these grassland wells are present. Then prairies are in the North America. North America they are actually in USA as well as in Canada. Alright, so these are the prairies, the vast grasslands. Alright, the soil has fertile upper layers created from fires and decay of deep grass roots which makes it ideal for farming and grazing. See, as I'm saying that there are not, not much trees that were there. So uh, historically, these grasslands have been claimed for farming. So a lot of farming is done here and the prairies of North America are actually called the wheat basket of the world. All right. So a lot of wheat production takes place in the prairies. So that is why now that these grasslands have very fertile soil and they are used for agriculture. All right. So if you uh, see this on a map now these are the grasslands of the world fine so first of all we'll talk about the savannas the tropical grasslands so you can see that the tropical grasslands these are present in india as well you can see they are present in africa the countries are like tanzania kenya all right all these countries zambia zimbabwe all right these countries have the savanna and then you can move towards the Brazil region that is the South America they also have these savannas the tropical grasslands and also Lanaus in Venezuela Colombia region so these are all the tropical grasslands fine so these are all the savannas fine and now we'll talk about the temperate grasslands now first of all we'll see the temperate grasslands of the Soviet Union former Soviet Union or now you can see the Central Asian region so these are the steps these steps are present in Russia, Ukraine, as we said, Belarus, Georgia, all these countries. Then Pustas, this is Hungary. Hungary is present in Europe. So this is the Pustas, that is the grassland there. You have Pampas in Argentina and Uruguay. So these are Argentina and Uruguay. The countries are present here in South America. And then the prairies of North America. So these are the prairies that are present there, which are also known as the wheat basket of the world. And in uh, uh, Australia, you have both savanna as well as the temperate grasslands. Fine. In the north region, you have savannas, and in the a little bit, you know, towards the south, you have the downs. The downs are the temperate grasslands. And then you move towards New Zealand. New Zealand may you have the Canterbury Plains. All right. These are also the temperate grasslands of these areas. All right. So on the entire globe, now you have an idea that where the grasslands. The major grasslands of the world are present so this is also coming under the terrestrial biome the terrestrial biome is here grasslands so if you are studying the grasslands you must know that where these grasslands are present what kind of variety of animals you will see there see wherever these grasslands are present you will find that all these for example buffaloes all right wildebeest deer giraffe zebra all these which survive on the grasses they feed on the grasses all right they will be present at these locations all right fine so now we have studied the forest we have also studied the grasslands all right so as i mentioned that these are also on the basis of decreasing rainfall fine this forest region was having a lot of rainfall so that is why they are having lot of trees now we are moving when we move towards grasslands they had lesser rainfall all right now we are moving towards even lesser rainfall that is the desert area 
all right so the biomes as i mentioned earlier we are dividing them on the basis of the dominant vegetation the weather and the climatic conditions this this is how you actually differentiate one biome from the other now we are moving towards a terrestrial biome that is known as desert all right now desert is an area which has very very less rainfall that is the characteristic feature of a desert if there is an area which is receiving very very less rainfall about 10 to 20 centimeters of rainfall annually that means that area will not have a lot of vegetation all right it will have coarse sedimentary rocks all right it it can also have sand so these are the characteristic features of a desert fine now if we see the desert on the globe we have two types of desert so one is hot and arid desert these are the deserts that are present in the again tropical areas fine these have very hot climates the, these are very arid they have uh, the presence of sand now the other one is a cold desert cold desert they have also very less rainfall but the temperatures are lower because they are present in the temperate regions all right so let let us first read the hot and arid desert now these are the areas of extremely low rainfall all right now desert present in low latitudes sahara desert okay it is present in africa it is present in actually north of africa so all these countries like algeria egypt ethiopia all right so all these uh, countries that are present on the top of the african continent they are actually present in this sahara desert tunisia morocco they all are in this category algeria fine so uh, this is the sahara desert now we'll talk about the southern western north america so uh, in north america we we see america as a cold region fine but in america also there is a region the western part of uh, america uh, where there is very very hot desert present it is one of the most hot desert on the earth all right so a hot and arid desert is also present in north america then there are uh, such a desert present in south america in australia and also in middle east all right in middle east what are the countries that come in middle east these countries like iran all right you have uae saudi arabia iraq syria all these countries they are coming in the middle east fine so these also have the what type of desert what type of uh, dominant vegetation they are having they are having desert all right so very very less rainfall very very less vegetation so seasons are generally dry and hot with few occurrences of rain during the winter so very very less rainfall heat peaks to extremes during the daytime now why there is so much heat see if you have studied this in geography if you have uh, clouds all right clouds actually uh, protect the sun rays coming on the surface so they can actually cool the temperatures of that area but if there is a clear sky in these areas as there is no rainfall that means there is no cloud formation so these areas get the direct sunlight all right so the direct sunlight heat uh, heat up the temperature and it can actually reach to extremes fine and these so because there is no clouds to shield the earth from the sun's rays that is why they have the extremes of temperatures now vegetation consists mainly of shrub and small trees so the trees are actually which are adapted to the desert like situations for example various varieties of cactus are present in these areas a uh, lot of shrubs all right so not much relevant to the biodiversity of that region that is why there are a lot of uh, the species are very very less in this area uh, the species that are actually present are nocturnal nocturnal means they actually go out in the night because during the daytime the temperatures are very very hot so they cannot uh, survive all right such uh, hot temperatures so the species are actually snakes spiders scorpion these are the species insect species are also present here and also some uh, species that have adapted to such hot uh, climates for example camels they survive in such desert hot arid conditions all right 
so this is the example of what we are talking about as a desert so you can see sand all over so there is not much vegetation this is the animal the camel that is actually present in these areas all right so this is the picture of sahara desert now we'll talk about the cold desert again because we are studying the vegetation entire on the entire globe so we will move towards the temperate regions so if you move above the 23.5 degree north and south you are moving towards the temperate zones now temperate zones are colder zones fine so they are found in temperate regions at high elevations or in the mountainous area so these kinds of cold deserts are actually present in mountainous areas as well because mountains they are also at very high altitude and at high altitude the weather the climate will be cold fine and if there is no rainfall it will turn into a cold desert all right so what are present here the shrubs and grasses are main type of vegetation so not much same kind of vegetation which can survive the cold temperatures most plants and other organisms have adapted uh, to such harsh conditions all right to frigid conditions for example if we talk about india in india ladakh is a cold desert fine in ladakh you will find yak okay it has adapted to the colder uh, temperatures of that area all right the cold deserts are located at higher latitudes than deserts situated in tropical and subtropical areas obviously the cold deserts will be present at higher latitudes in the temperate latitudes and they experience colder temperatures especially in winters so the winters are really a uh, very harsh here in the cold deserts as we said that these are deserts so they will have very very less rainfall and they also have very very less vegetation so less vegetation means less um, biodiversity all right and also as the temperatures are very cold so the colder temperatures what i'm talking about is they can reach up to minus 30 minus 40 in ladakh only there are temperatures that can reach up to minus 40 in winters all right so they have the extremes of temperatures in winters the cold deserts they are found in central asia so the uh, their regions are central asia north america southeastern south america antarctica and the arctic so these are the areas and also they are in india in india you have ladakh as the cold desert all right so this is the picture of a cold desert you can see this this is the picture of ladakh so you can see that Uh, there are uh, not much vegetation the coarse land is there in front of you okay and it is a dry land there are stones and boulders that you can see so not much vegetation and there is the animal that has adapted to these situations is the yak all right so this is about the cold desert so let us also see the world deserts on the world map so if we talk about the hot and arid deserts that we talked about the sahara desert fine so this is the sahara this is the african continent fine so this is all these countries are here so you have libya you have egypt you have algeria tunisia morocco senegal so all these areas the they have sahara desert all right then there is the arabian desert the arabian desert contains countries like uh, saudi arabia uae yemen fine so oman all these countries are here okay they also have the hot and arid conditions they also have this sand that we talked about the same like the sahara desert all right and in africa also in namib and kalahari these are also the hot and arid deserts all right in india in india you also have the thar desert you can see here this is the thar desert it is the same hot and arid desert that is present in india and if you move towards north america we talked about that north america also have the hot and arid desert all right so this is the mojave desert the sonoran these are very hot and arid deserts here and if you go towards uh, australia australia in the western side has lot of deserts all right so you have the great sandy the tanami simpson great victoria gibson so these are all the desert regions okay they are also known as the outbacks of australia all right so these are all desert areas in australia as well fine then we talk about the cold deserts in cold deserts if we talk about india we have ladakh 
all right we talk about mongolia and china we have the gobi desert in china we have the taklamakan desert kizilkum so all these and iranian desert these are cold desert and great basin desert these are cold desert present in north america fine then also patagonia desert a cold desert present in south america all right so these are the hot deserts as well as the cold deserts fine so whenever you are talking about deserts you should at least know that where these are present and also you should know that what are the countries in which they are present because the countries that have major deserts okay so majority is deserts so their economy will be different all right so in areas where a lot of trees and forests are present their economy will be different in areas where grasslands are present their economy will be different because they will be growing they will be doing farming in deserts area how will they do farming because the land is very very dry there is very less rainfall so they their agriculture is dependent on imports from other countries all right so that is why uae is dependent on agricultural imports on india all right so a lot of exports are done from india towards uae saudi arabia agricultural exports so th this is how we can relate uh, the geography we can relate the environment we can relate the economy and polity of all these countries so that is how i told you you should study about this examination because everything in this examination is connected if you see that you have around for example seven different subjects that you are studying in the prelims all right so all these seven different subjects are actually interrelated so if you derive an interrelation you will be able to actually learn them well you will be able to actually recall them for example if there is country that is present in any of these areas for example in sahara desert or in the arabian desert and that country ha you have such such and such question about its economy you should know that what is the situation what is the geography of this country and how you are supposed to answer it will it be a major exporter of any agricultural product no because where will they grow it all right so that is how you are able to logically understand each and every subject and you should also understand that why upsc is asking you to actually study all these subjects why not other subjects all right so they want you to actually derive a correlation between all the subjects fine so let us move on to the next topic so we have studied about the forest the grasslands and the desert area now we are moving towards another terrestrial biome that is a different biome altogether fine so this biome is actually present above the temperate region so if you talk about the temperate region they actually go up to the arctic circle so above the arctic circle what is there so arctic circle is at 66.5 degree north fine so above that you have the tundra so what is this what type of vegetation is there what type of biome is a tundra biome all right so let us understand this see the tundra biome as is written coldest of all the terrestrial biome it is also known as an ice desert so we just saw the pictures of a cold desert as well so how we defined a cold desert that the area was not receiving much rainfall if that area had rainfall they could have had vegetation but when we are talking about the tundra region it is a very very cold region so you are moving above the arctic circle okay you are moving into the 60 degree north latitude 60 degree south latitude if you are moving in these areas these areas tend to be very very cold you will find what you will find ice sheets in these areas all right so these areas are actually come they are coming under the tundra biome all right so tundra biome is the coldest of all the terrestrial biomes and also called as ice desert why desert because there is no vegetation okay there is ice and ice everywhere now tundra comes from a finnish word which means treeless land so this area will not have any trees all right so we have two types of tundra one is arctic tundra and the other is alpine tundra arctic is when we are talking about the area the regions in the arctic zone okay you know the arctic zone that is above the arctic circle all right the alpine tundra is if you are getting the same cold conditions on mountains okay if you move towards the higher peaks of the mountains so, so you can see the peaks of the mountains are generally covered with ice 
so that ice is actually forming this tundra biome that is an ice sheet which will form the tundra on the mountains so if you are talking about on the land on the terrestrial land all right so that means you are talking about the arctic as well as the alpine alpine is on the mountains and the arctic is above the arctic circle all right so it occupies the arctic tundra occupies the earth's northern hemisphere fine there is an under layer of soil called the permafrost now what happens in these areas is that you have ice sheets but in the summers the summers are very short in these regions okay in the short summers a very uh, few varieties of plants actually grow there now below that you know in the summers the top surface actually melts all right but if you go underneath that top surface a little bit of top surface if you go underneath it is permanently frozen so the land is actually permanently frozen in these areas all right so the soil the under layer of soil so you have soil and under that it is permanently frozen surface it remains completely frozen at all times so be it summer or winter winter mein to the surface will also be frozen the soil will also be frozen fine in the summers as we said that there are very short duration summers in these areas the top layer will melt but beneath that it will be always permanently frozen that is known as permafrost so where is permafrost present it is present in the tundra biome all right the plant life the plant life uh, consists of shrubs lichen moss flowers so these are very very basic Uh, life forms these are very hard also so they can actually survive in these very very cold temperatures all right they are extremely resilient they have roots close to the surface because deep roots cannot be possible because it is permanently frozen in the under layer of the soil all right now the birds in these areas they migrate towards south they also come and they migrate and they also come to india as well all right so in the winters in these areas the birds that are present there they actually migrate south alpine tundra they are exist they exist on the rocky mountain tops at a height of 10000 feet or more so we are talking about the mountain tops these will have frozen Uh, soil these will have the tundra biome type conditions all right the plants are again shrubs small leafy plants now also the animals that are present here for example there are wild goats that are present there all right then uh, there are certain other species of uh, ungulates they are also present now these have actually adapted to the cold environments all right the lungs of these animals are very large all right they actually want more blood cells in their body the more blood cells will carry more oxygen because the oxygen level is also low at the mountain tops all right so even if you see humans also if you can see the humans that are actually living at certain heights they also have more red blood cells if you compare them with you all right so they will also you will also find that they are having more red blood cells in their body they are also having larger lungs now this is because in these higher elevations the oxygen is very less all right so if there is lesser oxygen what will happen seizures will happen fine but these people or these animals they have adapted how that the body of these animals they have more red blood cells red blood cells are the carriers of oxygen so more red blood cells means more oxygen so this is how the adaptations also happen at different locations different regions in the world on this globe all right so this is about the tundra biome now if you want to see a picture now this is the characteristic biome the tundra biome this is the characteristic picture of that biome you can see ice and ice everywhere all right and this is the polar bear from here you can understand that what kind of animals actually live in this tundra region so where this is present this type of tundra biome it is present in areas in and around the arctic circle for example alaska canada greenland iceland find the scandinavian countries and the northern parts of uh, russia and also the arctic region and also the antarctica all right so let us see all the areas so you can see this is 
Alaska. All right. This is Canada. This is your Greenland. This small one is Iceland. These are the Scandinavian countries. This is the northern, northern part of Russia. Fine. These all have the tundra biome. So if you mark it like this. so this is the 66.5 degree okay above that is your arctic circle and in uh, if you see below this is also the yellow region fine so this is antarctica this is also having the tundra biome here uh, in the north you will find polar bears and here you will find penguins all right in the antarctica so these are all the regions where this type of biome is present it is the coldest terrestrial biome all right so this was about the tundra biome so from the terrestrial biome we have studied forest we have studied grasslands we have studied desert and tundra so we have studied all the terrestrial biomes now we'll move on to the next type of biome that is aquatic biome so now we were talking uh, till now we were talking only about the land terrestrial means land so we were talking about all the areas the land areas which we divided on the basis of dominant vegetation on the basis of weather soil on the basis of dominant animals that are present there all right so now we are moving the same towards water okay so we'll study about this uh, aquatic biome in our next class so i hope you understood the biome the terrestrial biome very well and i wish you all the best for your preparation so keep learning keep watching our videos and do subscribe to our channel and also we have offline classes so if you want to join them let us know thanks a lot